Yes, people, welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. International break is long and jarring, but we're nearly through the first week, and then that just means there's another week before Chelsea are back on our TV screens or box office screens, whatever BS Sky want to pull with us. But yeah, international break's halfway done. England have won their game, so I guess everyone's going to be happy about that. Edward Mendy's injured though, which means Keppo Willie's gonna have to start our next game, which is literally the last thing I want to see, but I guess we just have to move and roll with the punches, same way we've been doing the first six games of the season. And speaking of first six games of the season, in this video we're going to be talking about the top five talking points from our first six games of the season because we know there's been a lot of ups, there's been a couple of downs as well, there's been plenty to talk about. And I know six games is not the perfect amount of games to, to judge what we're going to do throughout an entire season. If you go back to 16, 17, if you looked at our first six games of the season, we'd look like an entire mess and then we didn't drop a single point for the rest of the year. So who knows, but it's still going to give you a decent idea of what we we can achieve so we're going to delve into the five talking points let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the thoughts i make down in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe to carefree lewis g and yeah let's get straight into the video first place to talk about and it's the defense there's nowhere else to really start with it Last season, we know how bad our organisation was defensively. I think we conceded more goals in the season that we did since 1990 or 91, something crazy like that. And it was definitely the most goals we conceded in our Premier League history. Yep, the goalkeeper was a huge problem for that. But we always said the defence didn't really help his case either. It was awful. And even, even though we've had our mistakes defensively, there's been a couple of individual errors. The first point I want to say is the defence already looks 10 times more solid than it has done last season. You lot might butcher me in the comment section for it, but realistically, look at the way we played over the first six games. I think over the space of a game, we've looked ridiculously solid. We just need to cut out the individual mistakes from our game. I think our organisation has improved so much. We defend more as a team now. I think even individually, bar the stupid mistakes that keep costing us games, throughout the entire game, I'm seeing a lot of great performances from individual players, except for Marcus Alonso. He's the anomaly in this. And Emerson as well. But other than that, everyone else I think has played excellent defensively, and it's only been individual mistakes that have cost us. If we go round on a game by game basis, Brighton, except for Tariq Lamptey just doing Alonso dirty for 90 minutes, I thought Christensen had an amazing game, Zuma was excellent as well, and Reese James was all over that right hand side. Even the Liverpool game as well, which Liverpool, that game is so annoying to me because I am sure we, we leave that game with at least a draw with 11 v 11. First half, first half we handled Liverpool excellently and yeah they dominated the game but we weren't trying to battle them on a possession game because we would have lost them, we would have lost the game trying to fight for possession. We just coped with Liverpool, we handled them and they didn't even have a shot on target until that stupid Christensen red card and as soon as that happened the game just fell apart because nine men defending a goal with Kepper in it, good luck, good luck, I'd like to see you try any better. Even after the two goals from Liverpool, I still thought we held, we held them really well. If anything, Liverpool kind of took their foot off the gas as well because at 2-0, they know the game's done. We know the game's done. We can't really try press them forward as much because if we do that, we're already going to be open up and then it will be 3-0. So both teams just kind of just let the game go on. We had the penalty as well that got saved. It just is what it is. West Brom. Now, I will say, that was the only game that looked like a throwback to last season's defending. Marcus Alonso was on a madness. Thiago Silva, I'm just going to put that down to a bad debut. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say he's washed or anything like that. And if any of you guys are watching this saying that he's washed, you lot are being reactionary as hell. Second half, I thought we were brilliant defensively. Hell, even first half, again, you take the individual mistakes out of the game, and I thought we had a very good performance defensively. Bar those three mistakes that led to three goals, there weren't really any more issues in the team. And since then, I think our defence, we've started to get rid of those individual mistakes out of the team. Crystal Palace, amazing performance. Uh, Tottenham, you take away that stupid Emerson, fall, em, Emerson falling asleep, and yeah, we had a good defensive performance in that game as well. But you can see where the problem is, it's those two left backs. Ever since Ben Chilwell's come into the team, we've looked so much more solid defensively. I can already sit here and say in my chest, best left back we've had since Ashley Cole. Yep, the standard is in hell, but the point still stands. I think our defence is going to be a lot more better towards the end of the season as well, once we get these individual errors out of our game. But we're going a good way towards doing that. Second point for me, and it's Edouard Mendy. 
Edward Mendy, he doesn't have a lot of pressure on himself right now, but I will be real when I say his performances are going to define what we do this season because there's going to be no one else in goal that's going to help him out or help the team out if that's if he starts flopping. I'm not going to say he is going to flop and I'm not going to speak it into existence either. But if Edward Mendy flops, we are so pissed. We are so pissed, I can't even lie. You lot, I don't even need to speak too much about Kepa. We've spoken about him so much over the last year and a half. And honestly, now that we have a goalkeeper to replace him, I don't want to keep putting bad energy on this guy because it's just going to be me hating on a Chelsea player for no reason. But we know what the case is with Kepa. We know I've spoke about how the bar's in hell when it comes to left back. The bar is even further below than hell when it comes to, in to being in goal. And I already said in my previous video yesterday, Mendy has to literally forget how to use his arms in order for Kepa to get his spot back. Because now Frank Lampard doesn't even have to start Caballero to show his lack of trust in Kepa. Edward Mendy, I think, he's going into this team with minimal expectations, like he can do the bare minimum we're going to celebrate it. You lot have seen in videos on the t on the Twitter timeline and everything, we're all celebrating him catching the ball, let alone making world-class saves. So, I think his assimilation to the Chelsea side isn't going to have a lot of pressure on him as well, but same way, if he starts making mistakes, I don't really know who we turn to. So, in the case of Edouard Mendy, his performances are going to seriously justify our season and justify what we are going to try and do throughout an entire season. But, I've still got reason to believe in him, even though he is injured right now. I've just got to hope and pray that that's not anything serious, because if we go back to Kepa and Willie in goal, bruv, like, I don't even want to talk about it. But yeah, on to the third point. Third point, Timo Werner. And it's been a frustrating start to his career in England for him. He's already had fans on his back. I've had Gunas in my mentions telling me Calvert-Lewin is better than him, Lacazette's better than him just because they've scored in the league this season. And I'm not going to, I'm not worried. Even though we've had so many strikers who we've signed in and they've flopped and they've meant to be amazing strikers, that is not the case with Timo Werner. And anyone who's watched a 90-minute game of football can tell that. First game against Brighton, he looked excellent up front. Would have had two goals if Mason Mount and, and Loftus-Cheek found them a little bit quicker. But I do think that sort of chemistry is going to grow in time. I also think the last couple games as well, him playing on the left-hand side has really hindered his progression. I get why we've been doing it, because we've had injuries throughout the squad. Ziyech still hasn't come back into the squad. Pulisic only just came back in against Crystal Palace. And because of that, we've been trying to play Tammy and Timo up front and trying to play Timo coming in off the left-hand side. And he has struggled to find space, to find room to try and play his game on that left-hand side. I'll be real, he's just been doing the bleep test the last couple games. Not his fault, though. And I still say he has been trying to find impact in games. He hasn't been playing like an Alvaro Morata who just roams around the field, just standing around doing nothing. Maybe jumps in for a 50-50 and loses it. Maybe gets the ball and loses it. Werner doesn't do that. He gets the ball, he at least tries to drive forward, beat a couple players and try and create something. Even though it's not a natural position for him to play in. We said he's versatile, he can come in off the left hand side. But that doesn't mean he initially has to start in that position. He likes to roam and take players with him. That way he can start moving around opposition defenders. He can't do that if he's already standing on that left hand side. That's why he needs to roam around from that central position. That's why I think he struggled. As soon as Pulisic gets back to 100% fitness and we can have Timo Werner coming in centrally you are going to see the gunman that he's been threatening to be over the last six games. He's already broken his, his duck in England. He got that goal at White Hart Lane. Game finished straight after that. I don't want to hear anything else about it. But as soon as he starts playing more centrally, you're going to see the player we played. We paid £48 million for. Fourth point I want to make, N'Golo Kante. All of you wastemans who said that we should have sold N'Golo Kante last season. What are you telling me now? I told you, do not sell this guy. It would be damn near suicidal. The guy on his first game against Brighton I think he made more interceptions than the entire Tottenham squad combined then the guy has been all over the field over the last few games Liverpool Liverpool he was immense he was one of the best players on the field and even in that first half he was just all over that Liverpool side either breaking up play or even progressing the ball his dribbling skills were excellent and look it looked like the N'Golo Kante of old was back and this guy really just needed a break that's been the huge that's been the biggest problem with him is that we rush him back from injury so long I mean so quickly and then when he comes back he just goes and gets injured again and that's why people have been calling him injury prone because he's just been coming back to in coming back off injury playing straight out having poor performances getting another injury and being benched again 
kind of Kante's fault as well because I'll be real, he is just a sort of character that if you ask him to do something, he's probably going to say yes. And he always wants to try and contribute in any way that he can. It's just a sore player that he is. But same way, our management of Kante did need to be a lot better over last season. I do think the project restart has helped because it's given that little four-month break in between. And also the one-month break after the FA Cup final finish. That's the reason why we're seeing N'Golo Kante back at his best. But honestly, thank God we didn't sell this guy. I had people telling me we should sell this guy because he's 29. It's the best time to sell him. Are you stupid? I've said so long. Play him until he's in his mid-30s. And as soon as he loses his legs, he can play that Makaleli role that everyone's been begging him to play for the last few years. Trust me, this guy can be our player for the next five or six years. I don't care how old he is. Final point, and we're going to talk about Mason Mount because right now it's the only thing Chelsea fans want to talk about. Mason Mount and... I get why fans have been annoyed that he's been playing so regularly because it has had an impact on his performances. But same way, I think he's just been overplayed. I don't think he's an overhyped talent. I don't think he's he's Lampard's favourite or anything like that. I think he's very key to the way we play in terms of the way we press and his movement off the ball does help that a lot. But I also think he has been overplayed a little bit. And I also think him playing on the wings hasn't helped him out either. Yes, I will agree his end product does need to improve. But he's still a young developing player. And I'm not going to use that as an excuse for ages. But I'm still going to say right now, just give the guy a little bit of a break. If you're playing him game in and game out, of course his performances are going to dip. We have seen it with so many players. Literally Tammy Abraham last season was being overplayed to death. And his performances nosedived and he never recovered for the rest of the season. I'm not saying that's going to be Mason Mount. But I am seeing a little bit of similarities. He does just need rest. That Tottenham game, he was poor. But he should have been taken off a lot early. If you want to criticise Lampard for that, fine, go for it. But same way, do not criticise Mason Mount. Because all of this criticism going his way is giving me little vibes to when Lampard was at West Ham. And all the West Ham fans were saying it's nepotism and he shouldn't be playing. And Harry Redknapp was the one saying, this is the guy that's going to go straight to the very top. I'm seeing the same vibes except Lampard is Redknapp, Mount is Lampard. And whatever that fan was saying, Scott Cannon was better than him is just half the Chelsea fan base. Bro, trust in Mason Mount. The guy is a baller. The guy is going to develop into a top midfielder. Do not let it be for another club. Trust me when I tell you Mason Mount is going to do bits for us this season. And he's going to turn up for us in key points. But guys, this is the end of the video for you guys today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the thoughts I made down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the chills.